Hello and welcome to PlayStation Racer. My name is Mitchell Morgan and we are back with another video in our series in which we are looking at the livery editor in Gran Turismo 7 and we're looking at how I created my most recent car livery. I deliberately went for a more minimalistic livery and one that was clean and modern looking and I wanted a colour scheme that was red, black and white and one that featured colour gradients. Over this series of four videos, we will look at the creation of the SVG files that we used, both basic and more advanced SVG files. We look at using the livery editors built in color gradient panels to paint our car. And then we look at the placement of sponsor decals, where to find those decals and more. This is the third video in the series. We've already looked at the creation of basic and more advanced SVG files. And in this video, we look at using the color gradient panels in Grand Turismo 7's livery editor to create the underlying paint scheme for our car. Now, throughout this series of videos, I'll be using various image files, and it is important to note that you must always get permission to use any image file that is not your own. In other words, an image file that you have not physically created yourself. If you're, you, if you're using somebody else's image file, you must either get written permission, you must purchase a license to use that image file, or you must acquire some other form of license to use that image file. You cannot simply download something off of the internet and assume that it is yours to do with as you need. My advice is always to be very, very sure that you have adequate permission to use the image. For the avoidance of doubt, and with the exception of the in-game images, I have sought and obtained permission to use all of the images used within this video. So one of the first things that I'm going to do is to break one of my golden rules for the moment. I am going to go into Brand Central because I want to buy a specific car. And it just happens to be the BMW VGT because it's a car that I really like and it works really well with this particular livery. So if I just come across to the VGT, it's a million to buy. Uh, I've got a couple of colors. I actually quite like the black. Uh, do you want to go? Yeah, I'll just go with the black sapphire. We will purchase that. Okay. And this is going to be the base car that we're going to use for our new livery. Okay, I've unlocked a hypercar parade bonus. And we will change into this car. Okay, so if we come out of there, out of there, out of there, and we need to head down into the livery editor. So for the moment, we've got our black car, which looks stunning, and I love that car. We'll probably buy a second one and keep that. But for the moment, I want to go into the livery editor, and we're going to create a design because we haven't got one to open. And We've got a lovely black car, but I actually want the body to be white uh, in this particular instance. I'm going to go for that white. Solid is fine. And uh, so for the body, I'm going to body two. I'm just going to make sure that that is white as well. The rear wing, I'm going to want a black. Uh, we'll go for um, that black there. Uh, solid is good still and for other we're going to want to go black as well so okay that for the wheels I want to go with a red color I'm just going to go with that red there I think we'll go with solid just so we've got solid colors and that is our car color done decals will come to in a moment Race options. Uh, I'm not going to have any stickers on the doors because I want to have it on the bonnet only. Uh, we'll go black for the Gran Turismo for the windshield banner and I'll go black for the Mitchell Morgan name. Light cover we can't have and tire stickers we can't have. Editor options. I'm sticking with exposure zero. For the rotation with the camera I've got X and Y standard. For the decals which we'll be doing in the next video i'm going to leave that as a line with surface and the default decal color is white with the background of black i'm happy with all of those for the moment so then if we go into decal 
I'm just going to try and just zoom that out a moment. For I'll start off with the body and we'll add a layer. And we're going to pick uh, shape number two. I'm going to go with um, that one there that I think is 205. Uh, we're going to make this black. And I'm just going to OK that for the moment. Just, uh, yeah, it is 205. I'm pretty sure that's the one that I want. We're going to make it black. Uh, the layer controls, I don't need to worry about. The uh, limit angle, I'm going to take that up to 10. And also the color depth, I'm going to, sorry, the limit depth, I'm going to take up to 10 as well, just so that it, um, it goes right the way through the car. And I am then going to um, rotate the item. Uh, so we're going to rotate this round to 180. And we're going to need to increase the scale. We have to take that right up to pretty much 200. Uh, 93 will do and then we're going to push that back to just before the lights so I think that would be fine we'll then uh, duplicate that symmetrically so now we've got it on both sides of the car and it's partially coming across the roof as well which is okay and if I go to the back of the car so we finish editing that layer I'm going to add another layer and this is going to be a solid color. I think we'll choose that one. Again, this needs to be black. And I'm going to need to make this um, quite large. So I think we'll make this um, How big can we go? Not sure how big we can go. <laughs> uh, 480 should be fine. And we'll leave that as the rotation should be fine. Um, yeah, 480 should be fine, I think. Let's check on that. All I want to do is make sure that that is bleeding all the way through. And you can see I've got a a white bar at the front of the spoiler there so if we just change the angle up to 10 and i'm just going to change my limit the uh, the depth up to 10 just so that that is completely uh, do I, I don't want to go the let's just take that back to where do we want to go to i just want to cover the back of the car just make sure that it is all covered. I think we're good with that. OK, so we can come out of there. Oh, hang on a second. I don't want to go to the depth. Um, that's better. Okay. Yeah, that completely covers the back of the car now, and uh, it doesn't quite cover the grey on the side. So we're okay with that. So we go with another layer. I've actually left this error in the video. It is very important when you are aligning panels, uh, these these blocks of panels, and also individual decals to make sure that the surface that you're applying them to is directly in front of you on the screen. In other words, you move the camera around to be immediately facing the area where you want to apply your decal. If not, you're going to have trouble aligning things, as you're going to see in this example. About 180. I do. And uh, we just need to make this 
I'm actually going to make this just so I can see where it's going and put it as this horrible color. And I need this to be um, sort of halfway up the roof. Uh, so let's just get this moved around a little bit. Uh, in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rotate the car around. And let's just um, delete that one for the moment. Let's come across to here. Add the layer. After some minutes, I realized that it would be better to have the car side on to apply this panel that is going to be going across the roof and just down the rear quarter. If you find that you are struggling to get a panel to fit exactly as you want, maybe try looking at a different view of the car, move the camera around, and it can take some time just to experiment. And very often, I find that I will put a panel on, it doesn't quite work, I'll delete it and try a different location, try a different camera angle, and then it all just comes together. It's all a bit trial and error. You'll notice here that I'm changing the limit okay, depth to 10. This is a really cool way of having a graphic bleed right the way through your car. And very often it will go from left to right, meaning you only need one graphic rather than one each side. After placing the panel, so. I'll very often move the car around using the preview just so that I can see that it aligns correctly and that it works with all of the other components on the car from every angle. This is a useful tip so that you don't find that things are bleeding through where you don't want them bleeding through or where the graphic doesn't actually cover all of the surfaces that you might want it to cover. Here I again change the colour to the green so that I can see exactly where this panel is being aligned to. Coming away from black or white just differentiates it from the colour scheme of our car. Sometimes it can take a little while to get one of these panels lined up properly, but in my experience it really does make it worth the time to get it aligned really well. So here I'm trying to align it with the A pillar, but also along the lower window molding so that we get a really clean line. Here, we duplicate the panel to display on the other side of the car. 
We chose duplicate symmetrically so that the gradient runs in the correct direction. If we were to choose duplicate on the opposite side, the graphic would be rotated 180 degrees as if we were placing it whilst looking at that side of the car. Duplicate would simply duplicate the panel and leave it in the same location, whilst we use that option a little bit later on in the video, and flip should be self-explanatory. With the roof and the A-pillar now completed, I quite like the way that looks, we're going to add in another panel and we're now going to work on the front of the car starting with the near side front wing. I'm just going to take the limit angle and the limit depth up to 10 and 2 respectively. And then we'll just bring that layer let's just slide slide that layer forward so what we want is we want the solid part of this panel at the front of the car and then blending backwards to around about the door mirror again i'm using green to emphasize the panel that we are actually working on. Now you'll notice that it's not bleeding across to the bonnet, and that is because that is a different panel area. So we're only going to be painting the front bumper and the wing. Once we're happy, we'll change that to black. And we'll just OK it. And then we'll just finish editing that layer. And then we're going to duplicate that because we want it to be a little bit darker at the front. And adding layers on top of layers will actually make the colours much more defined. So we've actually gone for three lots there. And then we'll need to duplicate these layers on the other side. So I've got three on one side and three on the other side just to balance them up. And then we'll just move around to the front of the car. And we're going to just grab the bonnet because I want to put the bonnet gradient panel on before I do the front just so that we can get the colours nicely matched up. Let's just uh, make that a little bit bigger. And just get that rotated around. I think 160 degrees and 270 rotation looks okay. Just checking that that looks fine with the alignment. And again, it's only covering the bonnet. It's like using a wrap across the bonnet uh, so it's nice and easy we don't have to worry too much about any bleed over onto the wings once we're happy with the placement we'll make it black and then again we're going to need to duplicate that layer uh, once that gives us two lots let's have a little look to see whether that is okay i think that looks reasonable don't worry about the white bit at the front, we'll fix that in just a moment. So if we just align the car to the front, now switching to the body rather than the bonnet, we will grab a block panel this time. And I'm just going to go straight to black in this instance. Actually, no, let's, let's stick with the green just so that we know what we're doing. Sometimes I'll switch to black, sometimes I'll, I'll stick with the green. I, I prefer the green because you can see exactly where it's going. So for instance here, you can see exactly where the panel is going rather than it being black. So you can see I'm quite wide, now a little bit narrower. 
just taking my time to line that up and then when I'm happy we'll just make that black that actually looks pretty good now yeah I like that I like that a lot just checking these panels at the moment I do quite a lot of placing and then double checking and looking around just taking my time to make sure that everything is just right at this stage whilst you're working with these paint panels it's nice just to get everything a hundred percent before you move on to adding the decals as much as we want to get into adding the decals and bringing this car to life i like to make sure that we get the underlying bodywork correct before we go any further Just check it from all angles. Just taking our time. It's amazing how when you're just turning it around like this, all of a sudden you'll see something that isn't quite right. And then, as I said, it's easy to get it fixed at this point. So when we're happy, we can go across to the save button and then we need to give our new design a meaningful name. Uh, so it could be, I don't know, Mitchell Morgan Racing, or it could be Black, White, Red, you know, something that means something to you. So I'm just going to call this Mitchell Morgan Racing. And if we click OK, the system will then go away and render our new livery that we can use on this car and any other the BMW VGTs. Unfortunately, if you want to use this livery on a different car, you've got to go through that whole process again. You can't copy it from one car to the other for obvious reasons. Anyway, I hope that you found this video useful. If you have, please consider giving it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, welcome, and please hit the subscribe button. And if you want notifications of the next video in which we're going to be applying the decals to this car, please hit the bell icon as well. And if you're a returning visitor, thank you ever so much for continuing to support my journey and my channel. It's very much appreciated. In the meantime, I will see you on the next video coming very soon. Bye-bye.